Hi guys, it's that time of the year again where I make a costume inspired by my favorite holiday, which is Christmas. Today we'll be going through the process of making the bodice. This year I'm going for a gold and ivory color scheme with red detailing. For the dress I'm using gold brocade, ivory chiffon, and embellishing it with beads and matching colors. I'm also using some Christmas decorations and ribbon as inspiration. If you want to see my previous Christmas projects, I'll have them linked below. Now let's get started. This is the bodice pattern that I've drafted for this project. It's a simple one piece pattern that I flat drafted. To start, I'm pinning the pattern onto a lightweight cotton. Since this bodice will be boned, I need to make a base layer where the boning channels are marked and sewn. This will be part of that layer. Then I'm just cutting it out. I didn't decide ahead of time where I wanted these bones to go, I did it by eye with more bones placed at the front and the side than at the back. In general, where more support is needed is where more bones should go. Also I made sure that both sides were symmetrical because that is really important. When all the boning channels are marked on the cotton, it's time to cut out the other half of the base layer, which is made from a heavy twill. This fabric will prevent the bodice from stretching and help it keep its shape. Now we are into the fun task of sewing all the boning channels. For this I use a medium stitch length and cotton thread. I tend to go pretty slowly so I don't have to redo anything and rip stuff out. It's important that each boning channel is even, otherwise your bones won't fit into the channels properly. If anything looks wonky, stop, rip it out, then resume. Now I'm using the base layer as a guide to cut out the lining, which is made from a lightweight glittery cotton. While I have that fabric out, I'm marking two 2 inch wide strips on the material's bias, then I'm cutting them out. These are going to get sewn together, then the edges will be ironed inward. This creates bias tape which I'll use to finish the bottom edge of the bodice. I'm using the base layer as a pattern once again and pinning it to the brocade I'll be using for the front layer of the bodice. I made sure that the right sides were facing each other, then I cut it out. Now the base layer gets sewn to the brocade with the right sides facing each other. I'm stitching around the top and side edges with a half inch or quarter inch seam allowance depending on how much room I remember to add to the pattern. Make sure to leave the bottom edge open, otherwise you won't be able to turn the bodice the right way out. Trim excess fabric from the corners and clip the seam allowance around the curves so they will turn over smoothly. Now turn the bodice the right way out. This is kind of easier said than done. It took me about 20 minutes to do this. I used pliers and a sharp pencil to make the process easier, but it was still pretty time consuming. Pin around each edge from the front side of the bodice and make sure none of the lining is visible. I'm using large whip stitches to tack the lining to the front layer. This ensures that the lining won't shift and become visible at the top edge of the bodice. I'm only grabbing a few threads from the top layer of the fabric, so these stitches aren't visible from the front side. And it's important that these stitches don't go through any of the boning channels. I'm using 1 quarter inch wide plastic boning in this bodice. The boning gets marked, then cut, then pushed through the channels. And remember that bones should stop a half inch away from the bottom edge of the base layer.
The next step is pinning bias tape onto the bottom edge. After it's been sewn on, turn the bias tape over and pin down the other edge. Then sew it on with a whip stitch. Now it's time for the back closure. I'm using eyelets for mine and spacing them one and a quarter inches apart. I'm going for embroidered eyelets since they are more durable and less likely to tear out of fray prone fabrics like brocade. To do these I punch a hole, then whip stitch around the edges with four strings of embroidery floss. I keep going until the raw edges of the hole are covered and the thread is densely packed in an even manner. Then the thread gets tied off and clipped. Now I'm pinning the ruffle pattern onto the folded edge of some chiffon and cutting it out. I'm hand sewing with small running stitches across the folded edge so it doesn't shift. Then sewing with equally sized stitches, three quarters of an inch below the top edge. I'm pulling the thread as I go so the fabric gathers at this point. And repeating the process a half inch away from the bottom edge. This panel gets pinned into the front of the bodice. Then sewn on with really tiny whip stitches. I decided to bead the neckline with 4mm fake pearls and gold seed beads. I like to build up a strand of beads, then whip stitch in between the large beads to secure the strand in place. It isn't as durable as some methods, but it gives you a really clean line of beads, which I prefer. Below the beading, I'm adding a spattering of gold sequins and a random pattern. That's it for this bodice and this video. I know it isn't looking very Christmassy yet, but this is just the beginning. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll stick around for the next installment. I really appreciate you watching and I hope you have a really fantastic day.